Hello and welcome to the Cyber One YouTube channel. My name is Ray and in this video we're going to assemble part of the right shoulder. So what we've got is a standard servo. This is one I've used previously for this purpose in Fred Mark One, but I'm going to open it up so you can see what I've done. And for that I need a small screwdriver. Okay, so what makes this difficult is the fact that it is soldered in place. But one of the important things we have to be aware of is on the gear side, there is a tab normally located here and you need to cut that out. If you don't, that tab will hit that stopper or this stopper inside the the housing and stop it from turning any further. Now one of the way Gael designed this to get additional uh, output torque was to put it through this screw. Now this screw gives a multiple turn output to get effectively giving it you know four times the amount of torque it does mean that it runs slower but it is a lot stronger and one of the things he was aiming for was to try and keep the cost down for the average builder and this works quite well so we take that little lock out and that allows this to turn multiple times because this is now turning multiple times we need to remove the potentiometer which I've done and that's like to do that you have to unsolder these three terminals here so these two, that's the, mo the end of the motor housing. These two are actually the positive and negative terminals on the motor. And this one is a shield. It's connected to the case of the motor. And it, we, it is connected to the round wire, or the, in this case, it's the uh, black wire from memory. Yep, the black wire, which comes back on the green wire over here sorry black wire here connects to these three terminals here and that's our power at ground connecting the casing of the motor helps reduce electrical interference noise so and it's also the hardest one to unsolder it requires quite a bit of heat to desolder it once you get that desoldered you extract the pot the pot is not going to be long enough so what we do is we cut it off and we extend the wires and I extended the wires using a bit of uh, ribbon that I had on hand in hindsight I probably should have used colored ribbon it would have been easier to identify the ends then you put the circuit board back in and solder these three joints back up again now this is normally a round o-ring and goes around it's there to keep moisture out but to be quite frank this robot should never see moisture so we'll put that back together when you're putting it back together make sure you get that notch on the right side or it just won't go in properly you may also have to notch the bottom of this hole out a bit further to allow the extra three wires out Okay, one of the hardest things, so I have extended wires on this for the servo. Just rounded that edge over a little bit. Okay, so on this part, there's a hole all the way down the middle so you can put a very thin long screwdriver down to do this screw up into the end here the problem is screwdrivers that are available are barely long enough if at all to engage with that screw Yeah. 
here that's not engaged so what we're going to do instead is attach this first onto our servo Here we have a very good um, diagram of the construction. Now, this component here is already installed in the torso, upper torso area of bread. So this screws into that component. Before we can actually install this, however, we probably need to get the rest of the shoulder part done. So let's have a look at that. Okay, so this is the next step of the process. The first part is one that lifts the arm up, it pushes it out from the body. Uh, you could say it's in the roll axis. These two parts here will connect onto this part. Actually, it's lid. like so with the servo in there and this is the cap for a gearbox so this is a, a worm drive gearbox that is called the uh, worm and that's the worm gear when you assemble it you want to make sure that that will spin nice and freely if it doesn't spin freely, you're going to have nothing but trouble with your robot. Now, the good news is, like the other one, we have a screw in the middle that attaches to the end, but we really need to put all of this together and in before we attach the servo. The good news is the screwdriver will go all the way through without too much hassle. So what we're going to do on this one they come with six well a pair of holes heading out in a radial pattern there's eight sets of two holes on the inner set of each of these i countersunk the holes in so that the screw heads could be completely flush and that stops it from grabbing onto that stops it from catching on any of the other framework around the side. Before we put those screws in, make sure you put the center screw in because you can't get it in afterwards. Now there's a, there are holes in the outside of this. Uh, the idea is you can put some small screws in through there, but I found those screws tended to not bite into these small holes and you'd probably have to mark separate holes. There are also a lot smaller screws so and I couldn't find any to suit what I needed so I made my own little holes there's a little bit of a lip around the edge here on the the output drive this came with the servo so that helps center it a little bit Let's put our screws in. Okay, we'll come back to the connection to the servo later. And the reason why we have to connect this after is on the servos, they have this little notch. I wonder if I can get a better view. So this little notch prevents it from sliding down and it actually sits into the little notch here. So that'll go in, sit there, and it won't move. And that locks it up nice and tight and solid. That will go in there. And should spin nice and freely. Before we lock it up solid, because there is a little bit of a, a 
lift up. We can lift it a fraction to get our screwdriver in the end, get onto that screw to engage it. Okay, so that's our worm. This is our worm gear. It simply drops in there and pushes down. Then when this turns, it turns off the gear. As you can see, there's a fairly substantial difference in ratio. Some of these screws aren't done up tight enough. Just be careful you don't push it through too far like I just did. That's better. Okay, so this goes through. Again, this should be reasonably free moving. So if we take the worm out, should be able to get that in and it should spin nice and free. And then that turns nice and freely. Now before we get too carried away and put the top cover on, there are two things that we need to add into this. One is a series of bearings which will give it a It'll make it run a lot smoother. Um, and we also want to put grease in here to help with the lubrication and to help prevent friction. Friction is a killer on these robots, particularly if, like me, you've printed in PLA. So uh, the recommendation on the InMove web website is a, a silicon-based grease. He uses a white grease. Uh, He's got this idea that it doesn't stain the plastic. Uh, I haven't had an issue with this axle grease staining the plastic yet. It does look ugly when you're first putting it in, but it also makes it very easy to see where you're putting it. So one of the places we're going to have it is where all of our bearings are going to run. Now you can over grease these things as well as under grease them. We want to make sure that every surface is coated with grease. Or at least every surface is going to have potential friction. So yes, that does include inside of here. On the website, uh, Gail uses the plastic uh, BBs uh, or airsoft bullets. I'm using six millimeter steel wall bearings. They're actually a lot easier to get in Australia than the airsoft bullets. Should have had some paper towel handy. Now I should probably mention at this point, I have already pre-inserted the nuts down these three holes. Uh, if you print the calibration guide first and adjust your printer, they should be a nice snug fit as they push in. If you haven't, uh, you've probably got your horizontal expansion set to zero, which is default and they will be a little bit on the tight side getting them in. Now, I hadn't checked my calibration before I installed 
I've printed this part and so you can see the the bit of a bulge that occurred when I installed it with a combination of heat and force so do as I say not as I do check your calibration first I thought I had done my calibration but I managed to lose the settings so just double check your calibrations Now I do need to find another screw to put down in the middle here. Now this part will fit over. I'm trying to remember how this goes. Yeah. So this will be mounted like so. Parts, these parts that goes there this thing goes there and this goes there now before installing this assembly add some grease to the shaft as well it is a, a screw thread and it does move and it does develop friction What you might want to consider doing as well before you put all this together is a little bit of hot melt glue to hold that in place you can weld it in place if you choose uh, if you're going to weld i'd only weld one side i wouldn't weld the other i'd still use the hot melt glue there's not much room for this to come apart inside the robot uh, but if you weld it or glue it in glue it using um, a super glue or some other epoxy so that it can't come apart you won't be able to pull this apart easily for servicing if you ever have to do some repairs and accidents do happen you get people and animals will knock your robot over at some stage and you may have to do repairs to the shoulders and the arms as a result i haven't had to do repairs to the body of one yet but i have had to repair an arm uh, the screw that goes in through this hole is actually a self tapper but you've got to be careful that you don't go too far we do want this hole free for the mounting bolt which will go through there and it pivots on that bolt okay so Let's just rotate this round this way. So the position of this is controlled by, actually I haven't put those screws in yet, a pot that gets mounted into this, which is on there. So I'd better mount that screw in there before I forget about it like I already had. We want to mount the pot into that after we get it attached to the robot. Now the reason for that is this pot which will come up and get mounted in a holder like this and into this point here. Now it's important to note that that sticks through and sticks through a part that's attached to the body already in the shoulder and that turns the pot as it pivots in and out. There is adjustment on this rotating. I get my fingers out of the way so you can see. And there's a screw to lock that rotation in place. So we'll do that install all of that when we install it into the body to make life a little bit easier for myself i'm just going to pull that off for now we do however have this part which mounts into here and gets pushed down we have this part which holds the pot
and that gets held down by a screw. So that screw will lock that and prevent it from turning. That goes in there and the little flats on this potentiometer will line up with the little flats in there. Before you put it in there I suggest getting this rotated all the way around so that is up the top. I'm trying to remember where this next servo fits. So that'll mount like so and that'll rotate around. So I'm just going to get my RC remote out because I haven't got a servo tester yet. Although thanks to my Patreons, uh, Go Lucky and El Morales 45, I now have one on its way. Okay, so one of the big issues a lot of new builders seem to have and I forgot to put those screws in as well, uh, is getting this potentiometer set up and not damaging their servos in the process. So we'll look at setting that up and locking it in place. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is rotate this around so that these two faces are facing the same way. So you've got the tag for the arm I want it facing the same way and there's a reason for that you can do it 180 degrees from that and it will work but I plan to run my wires through that groove or that gap At this point, I want to kill the power. So, one of the things I've discovered is that that needs to be mounted like so. So that's the flat, that's centered. If I plug this back in again, see that I can control its position. Now to tell if you've got it wired the right way, if you turn the pot clockwise it should rotate anti-clockwise. If you turn the pot clockwise it should rotate anti-clockwise. So that's how you know you've got it wired the right way around. The idea is this will rotate and try and rotate the pot until it stops to match what you're trying to do with your control. So, so that I don't accidentally break stuff, I'll unplug the power from it. We're going to turn this because that's running that way, that slot, and that's running that way. So we want them to line up. Now I have these two screws with washers on them to hold the pot in place. Now there is apparently two models, two different types of pots that come in these large uh, Hobbycast 805BBs. That washer might be problematic on this side. Let's see if I even got it close.
question is if I got that in the right spot. I don't think I have. I think I might rotate that pot 180 degrees in there so that the wires end up closer to the top screw. Not the best solution, but it will be okay. Now you don't actually want the arm facing straight down at center. You want to be able to come back a little bit, but not all the way back. And that's where having this adjustable comes into its own. This is where a servo tester comes into its own because you can set it to a position and leave it. When I uh, sold these up, I should put a little bit of heat shrink over them. I will lock it, uh, insulate those with a little bit of hot melt glue. So that can go back on. Okay, so what I haven't done yet is in here is provision for bearings and grease so that'll be the next thing I need to do now in the version 1 of the shoulder uh, they didn't Gail didn't have bearings in here it was just a friction run uh, a lot of users or a lot of builders who are on the more creative and adventurous side did modify it. Uh, what they did was they added ball bearing races and the like, but this works just as well. Make sure you orientate this the right way when you put it on. So the holes through the top are the top. The servo goes to the bottom. Well that's provision for another servo race to go on the bottom. It goes on like so. Now what I haven't installed and I should have already are two nuts one in here and one in here and then that's held down with a screw all the way through so I'll just go get those I'm just going to put this screw in here for a moment to hold that nut in place so it doesn't fall out there is another piece to go on there so these two screws will allow you to adjust the tension on the bearings So next step, there is these two parts which they scan. And they hold the next section on. So we might do that in the next video. And we will might even call it 
liquids for today. In the next video, we'll assemble this into Fred's shoulder and then we'll uh, calibrate the shoulder pot and connect that into the controller on the back and do a little bit of testing. Uh, after that, we will do the bicep and get it all set up, ready to work. And we'll, uh, we'll just leave you with a, a demo of that shoulder rotates. That rotation, of course, is in the middle in here. So once you've got it set up, it's difficult to get out. But that seems to be working well. If you like, like these videos, don't forget to click on the like button, subscribe, ring that notification bell so that. YouTube will let you know when the next video is out. There is a Discord channel that you can go to. Uh, there will be a link in the description for that. I have a Patreon if you wish to help support these, like my current two Patreons, Go Lucky and Al Morales45. There will be a link to that in the description. They do get these videos two weeks earlier than YouTube does. Uh, one of the benefits they achieve from that. I hope this has been a help in the setting up of the pots. They can be difficult for people who have never done them before. We'll see you in the next video.